Hey Zoomers, welcome back to World Zoom. So happy you could join me, you know, as I am each time uh, you tune in to, to watch the show. Uh, good response from the last few videos. I've had a fun time uh, doing some of those. This one I just happened to think of. I was sitting there today thinking like, what in the world can the topic be? Then I remember when I was in Dumaguete, I did one like one month in Dumaguete, the good and the bad. And I thought that could be a perfect topic for today, the good and the bad of Cebu, because uh, I've been here uh, as of today, I've actually been here exactly one month. And, and I can tell you overall, I will give it plus and a check mark from there because I do enjoy it here. I do plan to travel around and explore, you know, some different other areas, but for the most part, being here ticks all the boxes that I uh, very much enjoy and some of the shortcomings that are here are something that could be relatively easy to overcome, or at least with my lifestyle, I would be able to overcome that, especially if I had a car here, or wasn't so lazy to go to Dumaguete and, and, um, and get my car and bring it over here. Really, the reason I didn't is because I just wasn't sure I wanted to be here, and I know it is a hassle um, you know, with, uh, with getting the paperwork and getting your automobile on those ferries to move them from island to island. I did that once going to Iloilo and I haven't forgotten that experience. So it wasn't uh, that pleasant. Uh, so what are the goods and what are the bads here in Cebu? And I'll start with one that may surprise you because it certainly surprised me on the good category. You probably won't believe me, but it's the traffic. I'd heard all these stories about just the horrendous traffic of Cebu and that it was Manila-like or Bangkok-like, uh, you know, or Seattle or Los Angeles-like. I simply have not found that to be the case. Now, uh, in fairness, I haven't been the driver. I've been riding in grabs and, and taxis and private uh, automobiles that I take from here in San Remo in town. But I've been to Mactan, I've been into, you know, both from when I was staying, um, you know, in town at IT Park, I've been out going to different areas. And now for the last three weeks, I've been coming in uh, to SM City or like today I came into Isle of Mall all the way in. I mean, it wasn't more than 20 minutes, you know, for, for me to, to get in. You can get stuck, and I have been stuck a bit uh, going uh, to Lapu Lapu onto Mactan Island uh, from Cebu. But, and, and you can, you know, depending on the time, it's like everywhere else, right? You're going to have the rush hours on both ends. But I have been pleasantly surprised with the traffic here in Cebu. Another bit of a surprise, because you just expect a city this size that the friendly, uh, the people wouldn't be as friendly as they are. Maybe it's just the areas that I've been in Business Park, IT Park, now out here uh, around Amalfi and San Remo and El Corso. El Corso is the waterfront, oceanfront, like groupings of restaurants where so many Filipinos go about 4.30 to 5 in the afternoon, watch the sunset. Uh, it's about a little more than a mile walk up and down uh, the boardwalk there. There's no automobiles or motorbikes on it at all. And it's really nice. The ocean breezes, the lighting's nice. There's dozens of restaurants. So it's nice and the people uh, are quite nice. But even when I was right in the hustle and bustle of Business Park and, and around Ayala, I just found the people to be charming and to be very nice. And uh, I haven't had a single moment or single issue yet. Uh, now, when I was in Dumaguete, I was in and around more of the, because I knew the city, so, and I was driving, so I hit all the areas where you could have been into mischief. Here, I haven't been to those areas. I don't even know where they are yet, but the areas that I have been, um, you know, the people have been very generous and very kind uh, with me. Um, another, I will add, um, the malls are awesome. 
I, I, you know, you may not be a mall person and, and when I'm home, I may not go at all or I'll go extended periods of time, but it's sort of a way of life here and one that I embrace. When I'm in Thailand, I go to the malls. When I was in Duma and Manila, I went to the malls and here, I mean, what have I, been? I think I've been to five or six different malls here, a couple of which are just out of this world quality wise with, with stores, the SMC side mall. Uh, is just absolutely enormous, four stories plus the basement area and an outside walk area four stories up that you can go out that almost feels like the jungle. There's so many trees and plants, hundreds of stores and a food court, everything you can imagine in a mall. SM City's older but quite nice and pretty straightforward to get to. And of course, you've probably heard of Ayala Mall, uh, which is is... Uh, you know, just a wonderful mall. But Robinson's, you know, is quite a bit larger than the one in Dumaguete, uh, and it's nice. And so is J Mall and G Mall. So there, and there's a bunch more that I haven't been to, but I have been impressed with that. If you happen to be a stroll around, check people out, go to the food court, eat, have your coffee, do the mall thing, just part of your daily or weekly routine. Uh, there's some great stuff here to be able to do that. Golf is good. I won't dwell into that. If you have some questions, ask me uh, specifically about the golf. Uh, but uh, it's pretty quality. It's in need of some water. You know, most of the areas here are really suffering in, in drought, and you can see those in those landscapes and those walking tours, um, how stressed some of the plants and shrubs and trees are. Uh, so, but you know, for me, my the flight of my golf ball is low, so that it rolls forever. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy it. Uh, the rounds are very reasonable, not Thailand-like. I mean, there's no real golf courses quite like you have the dozens or so in Thailand. But for being over here in Asia, the golf is, is actually pretty good. And there's several here, just like there is in Iloilo. Um, there's a lot of history here. I am a history buff. I enjoy museums. I enjoy walking and taking tours. I enjoy going to the churches, especially the old Catholic churches, um, and and I like just the old historical buildings. And it's pretty cool here when you know pretty much every building side by side is older than anything we have uh, in the U.S. Um, and you know they're just a lot of places. I'm waiting for Sheila to hit some of them because I know she wants to see them. And once I see them once or twice, I'm not as interested and I want to be as excited as she is when she sees uh, some of those places. Uh, so a lot of, a couple of them anyway, I've been waiting for her, but I have hit the Catholic churches and San Pedro and the areas like that, some of the beach areas and the downtown area, the historic uh, uh, areas. I haven't seen the cross and uh, some other areas too, but there's a lot of cool stuff uh, for you to be able to see uh, and, and go about if you're going to spend some time here as a tourist. Guys, uh, there's actually, tra tra I don't want to know if I'll call them traffic rules because I still have never ever seen anyone pulled over uh, anywhere in the Philippines unless they happen to go through a predetermined traffic check that's announced beforehand. But there are actually stop lights, traffic lights that people obey, and there's also stop signs. So now that's not to say when the light turns green, um, and the people behind you are worried there's not going to be enough time in the far left lane to be able to turn. That's not to say they're not going to go uh, three lanes out to the right uh, along with everyone else and then bunch up the intersection trying to turn left uh, when there's only maybe only one lane over there and you have three groups of cars uh, trying to turn into that one lane when two of the lanes are supposed to be straight. So don't get me wrong, they're still nuts and crazy drivers here. They don't follow much of any rules. They certainly don't follow a rule uh, turning in front of you, like making a right-hand turn. And it, and I just you just got to stay out of the right-hand lane if you can. Get over to the left or stay in the middle. If you drive on the right, uh, just all the motorbikes and the cars are coming out regardless of whether they're not looking either. They're just coming out. 
um, and uh, you know could present a problem uh, to you. So traffic lights, guys, that's a pretty good thing. And also in the areas that I've been, there's actual sidewalks. Um, you know, I can walk to El Corso, I can walk to SMC side. SMC side doesn't have a great walkway, but it's tolerable. But, um, you know, IT Park and Business Bay, some of the areas on MacTan, really lovely areas to walk and to be able to go somewhat safely. I mean, there's no sidewalk to speak of at all in Dumaguete that you can walk on and forget it. In Manila, Davao City's so spread out and so huge, you're not going to spend much time on foot. Uh, so these are the goods that I like about Cebu. And I really had to think a bit about some of the things that I didn't like. But, you know, if the title is going to be the goods and the bads, I guess you have to come up with some of the bads. Uh, the worst thing uh, so far here uh, is something I struggle with almost on a daily basis. And it's the complete and utter incompetence. Uh, of banks and supermarkets and stores, not so much restaurants. You know, I, I, I can't complain really about the food is good, right? The service is, is okay. I mean, sometimes for a fast food, the motto here is fast food s serves slowly, uh, you know, but you know, if you're going to Burger King or you're going to hit McDonald's, I mean, what real difference? you know, d does it make, you know, when you're going to the better restaurants, they're, they're okay, but this is supposed to be bad. So I'm talking about uh, the incompetence of the, forget the banks, forget immigration. It's a two, three hour uh, wait here, although better in some places that you hear about. Um, the grocery stores are the ones that are just, they're, they're truly unbelievable. And you saw yesterday's video about Sbarro, uh, the, uh, the pizza chain, um, and the German owner. Um, sometimes you can be either offended or struggle a bit with the daily small attempts to get in your pocket. Um, uh, for example, yesterday left uh, uh, SM Mall, the taxi driver picks me up and I've been going you know, around that area now for long enough. I know where to go to get the taxi line. I know where he should exit to go. So he does a 360, right? He circles all the way around, turns his meter on, right? He circles all the way around uh, the mall. Uh, and then he pulls back in and says, sorry, sir, I had an emergency. I have to go home. Well, he called someone, no one called him, he called. Of course, he was speaking his language. I don't know what was said. He probably, maybe he did have an emergency, but he never left the parking area. So I'm out two bucks, you know, and he pulls and says, I've got to drop you off here. Now, meantime, I'm right back at the same taxi stand where I've started, but I've been in that cab for four or five minutes. So we do a full circle. I'm out 90 pesos. He makes no motion to give me 10 pesos change. So I just shake my head and get out. These are small things, right? But they do add up. They're cumulative on your psyche. And so when you just see it, you know, almost hour after hour when you're about there, just trying to get in your pocket for small money, depending on your frame of reference, if you're having a good day, you shake that off, right? If you're struggling a bit emotionally or psychologically or you have worries, those things can really compound and send you off the deep end. And if you want to test your skill set, you know, go into the SM supermarket really at any time and try and buy something. Uh, that will tell me, you know, the kind of character that you have in your patience level. Um, a surprise here is the beaches just aren't good. You hear people talk about going to the beaches. If you do find a beach that you can get to and is tolerable, you know, it's 20 bucks to go use it per person. All the resorts in Mactan charge pretty substantial amounts of money, um, you know, for you to go to the beaches. Everywhere else that I've been uh, really looking, within limited experience not having a car, right, has been, you know, they're pretty crappy, honestly. The water's not clear. Uh, there's no sand. They've trucked in sand and built the beaches out on Mactan. But again, are you, are you going to spend 20, 25 bucks a person uh, to be able to use the beach? 
Uh, so, you know, Dumaguete didn't really have that great beaches right there, but you could go north or south, Bakong and Dowan have some of the best beaches anywhere. I mean, truly beautiful. Haven't experienced that here yet. I know you can go over to Mulbul or I can go down to Oslob. You know, there are places on Cebu with great beaches, but they're hours away, not minutes away. They're hours away. Uh, so, um, you know, that could be better, but what, what can you do? I mean, it is what it is. And uh, the food is expensive. You know, it, it is, I've noticed, I don't know if it's because I left for a period of time and, and, you know, what, six months, seven months, and inflation set in and it's that way in Duma and Iloilo, and I just don't know it because I haven't been there in a while, or if it's just the food here in CB, uh, Cebu is significantly more expensive than it was there. But there's not a, sometimes when you're in the restaurant, there's not much of a difference between the US prices uh, that I was paying before I left and the prices here for your uh, fast food, your low range and your mid range, uh, you know, prices. So I had a spaghetti uh, uh, with a couple, breadsticks today. I can't remember the side. It was some kind of side salad from there. It was really no difference of a price than what I would pay uh, back in Indianapolis for my for my meals. They're a little bit less, but I am surprised. So, so you can see by this list, there's just not very much bad or not anything where you would just you know, shake your head and move away from the area and say that's intolerable or something that I can't deal with. I just haven't found that here. I hope I don't find that here. So let me know what you think. Overall, I give it an A grade. I like the place. I like the people. The expats, you know, I don't see very many of them. They seem to mind their own business. They're not vicious uh, like the three or four uh, vicious ones that we have in, in Duma. There's just none of that going on here seems to be isolated to Angeles City and uh, Dumaguete from, from what I can see. So no problems uh, with that here at all that I've seen. So anyway, from WorldZoom, appreciate you guys as always. I'll talk with you tomorrow with another fun video. Bye-bye.